Hi, welcome back for our Magic Tree House number 12, Polar Bears Past Bedtime. Today we're going to be reading chapter three, titled Mush. And remember, there was an exclamation mark um, on our title of our chapter, which means that the author, Mary Pope Osborne, thinks that this is very serious, or it is said very seriously. So hopefully you made your predictions yesterday on what you feel this chapter is going to be about. Remember, we just met the seal hunter yesterday, um, had pulled up with all the wolves that Jack and Annie were worried about. Jack was looking them up in the book. So today, hopefully we get to meet this amazing man with the fur-rimmed hood on his head. Chapter three, mush. Did you come with the wolves? Asked Annie. The seal hunter looked puzzled. Did Morgan send you to us? Asked Jack. I had a dream, the man said. You were in it. You need help. Morgan sm or Annie smiled. Morgan sends dreams sometimes, she said. We came in Morgan's treehouse. It flies through time. Oh, brother, thought Jack. Who will ever believe this? Seal Hunter smiled as if he was not surprised at all. We do need help, said Jack. <laughs> Freezing. The seal Hunter nodded and then he left the window. He returned a moment later with two small parkas, like his own. Parka is a type of jacket, like the man is wearing in the illustration here. Both of the jackets were made of heavy, dark skins and with fur-trimmed hoods. He passed one to Jack and one to Annie. Thanks, said Jack and Annie. They put the parkas on. Hooray, said Annie, it is warm. Oh, yeah, said Jack, they're made of seal skin. Oh, poor seals, said Annie. Oh, don't think about it, said Jack. He pulled his hood up. His head and upper body were very snug now. Only his legs, his hands, and his feet were still freezing. Oh, thanks, said Annie. Jack looked up. The seal hunter was giving Annie a pair of fur pants, and then he handed a pair to Jack, too. Thanks, said Jack. He quickly pulled the pants on over his pajamas. Next, the seal hunter gave each of them a pair of fur boots and mittens. Jack took off his sneakers and pulled on the boots. He wiggled his frozen fingers into the warm mittens. I have a quick question, Jack said to the seal hunter. Do you know the answer to this riddle? He opened the no notebook and read, I cover what's real and hide what's true, but sometimes I bring out the courage in you. What am I? The seal hunter shook his head. Hmm, come, he said to Jack and Annie, and then he disappeared from the window. But what about those wolves out there, Jack called. The seal hunter didn't answer. Jack grabbed the Arctic book and looked for a picture of the seal hunter. When Jack found a picture, he smiled. The seal hunter was standing beside a dog sled and Jack read, in cold weather, the seal hunter travels by dog sled. Siberian Huskies often howl like wolves. A lead dog controls the others. The sled's runners are sometimes made of frozen fish rolled up in seal skin. Hey, Annie! They're not wolves, said Jack. They're, he looked up. Annie was already gone. Jack threw the book and notebook into his pack, but he was so fat in his furry clothes that his backpack wouldn't fit him. Jack loosened the shoulder straps and tried to put his backpack on again, and finally it fit. Jack looked at the small window. That would be a tight fit too. He went out head first and barely squeezed through. Jack fell onto the snowy ground and the snow was still dripping down. The air was misty white. Jack heard barking and howling. He moved carefully toward the noise. At first, he couldn't see the dog sled, but when he got closer, he counted nine Siberian Huskies. They had thick fur and big heads and pointy ears. The lead dog barked at him. Jack stopped. He's telling me to climb on, said Annie. She was already standing on the back of the sled. The seal hunter stood next to her in the snow. Jack jumped onto the sled next to Annie. The seal hunter cracked his long whip. Mush, he shouted. The huskies dashed off in a whirl of snow. Above them flew the snowy owl. Mush, we saw it right there with the exclamation mark. It was a very special word in this chapter, wasn't it? It was the special word that made the dogs go forward. Hmm, maybe you say stop to your dogs or sit or shake. Chapter four is called Snow House. Hmm, Snow House? I wonder what that one could be about. 
We'll find out next time when we read chapter four tomorrow from Magic Treehouse number 12, Polar Bears Past Bedtime. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed listening to our chat for as much as I enjoyed reading it for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.